Hey, what's up, y'all? SK Sports Cards here. Uh, this video was on the Tim Hortons Upper Deck Hockey Card Series. Uh, I've been collecting these for a couple of years now, although I didn't really get serious into it until the 1819 edition came out. These cards were available at all participating Tim Hortons restaurants during the month of November. Um, so it's been some time since I compiled this set, but I was able to get all the base cards. So anyways, I also bought the book. It was $15, which I thought was a little steep, but whatever, it's a part of the collection. And just to give you a quick run through through this, um, I'm not going to profile every single card in here. It would just be too long, but just flipping through it real quick, you can see that I was able to get every single one out of the base set. There's 120 cards in the base set. And... I think they picked 120 of the best players in the league, or the most significant players in the league. So these are all all-stars or near all-stars. Um, the funny thing is, despite all the packs that I bought, um, depending on what location you're in, sometimes you get the same card over and over again, and other times you never get... Like It was weird because like I would get... Like last year, I would get like 10 Shea Webbers, but then there would be a couple players who I never got. And it wasn't until I left my town and went somewhere else on vacation about some packs, I started getting other cards. Um, so what happened is uh, there was a trading event at one of the Tim Hortons restaurants near my house. I brought all my doubles and was able to make some trades. And then there was this lady who just went gangbusters and dropped, must have been hundreds of dollars on cards. And she had so many doubles, triples, quadruples that she just said, here, go and just finish your set and just let me do it for free so that's how I was able to finish the set um, overall my impression of these these particular cards is I'm a little disappointed with the quality and I can give you an example of that overall they're very attractive from the front a um, little bit of glitter on there but overall nice look from the front of the card the issue I have is just how they kind of curl up and they're like that straight out of the pack so it's not that they were wrecked or there was any water damage they literally are curled out of like fresh out of the pack so I'm not really sure what Upper Deck was thinking with that uh, and given that it's a dollar for a pack of only three cards and in reality you only get two cards in a pack because what's going to happen is one of the cards is a special card and that could be something really crazy or it could be something pretty mundane like for example these game day action cards like these are a dime a dozen and these stupid checklists with the San Jose All-Star logo on the front I mean there's ass loads of these out here there's just way too many so most of those are throwaways but, yeah, I was able to build the whole set. And then there's, out of that, you also have these Superstar Showcase cards. I was able to get most of those. I don't think I got them all. Um, Carey Price, Blake Wheeler, Brock Bozer, Taylor Hall, Claude Giroux, Eric Carlson, so on and so forth. Um, those cards, I think there's one out of six packs contain the Superstar Showcase cards. Um, the game day action ones I'm really not a big fan of, uh, but then there's these ones, gold etchings. Um, now for some reason I got Steve Stamkos pretty much every time I bought a pack, and I'm not joking, I had like seven Steve Stamkos cards. I was giving them away. Uh, but I was unable to get Connor McDavid, I was unable to get um, Johnny, Johnny Goudreau, but when I went up to Owen Sound, I hit up a Tim Hortons up there in about 20 packs, and all of a sudden I started getting all these gold etchings cards that I wasn't able to get in my hometown. Nathan McKinnon. Really cool little feature. I think these were 1 in 8 or 1 in 9 were the odds of getting these cards. A um, couple other things. These ones are even more rare, the clear-cut phenoms. Now... The base cards, I've been complaining about, and other people have been complaining about the quality of the base cards. When it comes to their inserts, like the special sets that are within the set, the quality is just amazing. Um, I've got most of these clear-cut phenoms. That's David Pasternak. 
Nicholas Ellers, Brock Bozer, Matthew Barzell, Dylan Larkin, Leon Dreisettle, Matthew Kachuk, Patrick Laine, the guy who's addicted to um, Fortnite. All he cares about is playing Fortnite. doesn't care about playing hockey. And Jack Eichel. And I just love the quality of these. I put these in top loaders, but I mean, on the back, you don't get much information. I mean, it's pretty much just translucent. But um, these cards are of exceptional quality. And a lot of them, if you look in, in Beckett uh, Hockey News, um, they have some significant value. Now, here's what really blew my mind. Boom! Boom! Top line talent, Sidney Crosby. Okay, so top line talent, the odds were like 1 in 27 or something. 1 in 30 packs. I was buying tons of packs. Never got a top line talent. I bought 10 packs at a store way up north. And one, I just couldn't believe it. I popped this open and like I was like, What? Cindy Crosby, top line talent, what? This is the most valuable card in the whole set. Uh, last I checked on eBay, it was going between 30 and 60 bucks. Um, I just blew my mind. I couldn't believe I got this card. I thought about selling it because I'm not a huge hockey card person. I'm more in the baseball, but... I'll probably hold on to it because I really don't have any real Sidney Crosby stuff at all. So I thought maybe I'll hold on to that one. Um, and there's, here's a few cards from last year. The last year did, that was a 1718 uh, Platinum Profiles. I was wishing, I hope they would have brought this back for 1819, but they didn't. There's Austin Matthews and Henrik Lundqvist, Crosby. Um, again, the quality of these was vastly surpasses the base cards in the set and I think that's really what the collectors are looking for is you okay you get the base cards whatever you can fill a book up with them but what people are really looking for is these um, and then instead of top line talent they did these triple exposure which was kind of the same idea um, kind of has that kind of early 90s um, kind of reflective look to it but here's Brad Marchand, and as I move it, I wonder if you can see that, there's three different exposures. And then here's another one I got for Patrick Kane. It's hard to see on the camera, but when you move it, the player moves. So that was from the 17-18 set. Um, a, lot of, a lot of car dealers have commented on how the Tim Horton set has really brought people back into the hobby. Uh, so many people are trying to, co to complete their collections, going in to see a card dealer to buy a couple cards to round out their collection and then see other cards on display that they're interested in. So it's been great in reviving the hobby, at least up here in Canada. Um, anyways, please uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I am looking forward to participating next year and buying some more of these. Um, if any of you are into the Tim Hortons cards, I would love to hear uh, your opinions on the quality of the cards and what you would like to see Upper Deck do next season. I'd really like to see Upper Deck kind of punch it up quality-wise, but that's me. Um, anyways, guys, peace out and keep on collecting.